this is Angie Homley Zabo, your friendly neighborhood art teacher. Uh, today I want to show you how to texturize your metal with a few simple techniques. I'm going to show you three different techniques, two different hammering techniques, both of which use a planishing hammer. A planishing hammer has a domed end and a ball peen end. So one of the hammer techniques will use the ball peen end on, the other will use the planishing end on, the slightly domed side. The other technique I'm going to show you is just a stamped texture. Um, and I use a pair of, or a set of letter stamps. Um, you can use letter stamps to write words, but I'm going to use mine to create an overall texture. Letter stamps are easy to buy at local hobby stores at this point. There's a lot of people that do stamping. Um, you can also buy sets of letter stamps through Rio Grande, which is where I order my metal supply from. It's also where I purchase my planishing hammer. To prepare yourself for texturing, you should be done cutting your metal. It should be filed and sanded to 600. I like to also polish my pieces before I do any hammered texture. Um, it allows for a nicer, smoother finish, and when I do the final polish on the piece, I won't lose as much of the texture. If you don't have a buff at home or in your studio, you don't have to polish it first. You can have a sanded tex texture and still hammer. You want to make sure your metal is clean, ready to go, you've got good surfaces. Safety-wise, wear goggles, because we always do. Um, and other than that, the only thing you have to be careful of is hammering your fingers, so just be careful where you place your fingers. Have fun, enjoy, this is a great way to add interest to your pieces. We're going to learn how to do some hammered texture today, and there's some things that you need to learn about first. We're going to do a planished texture, a hammered texture, and then we're going to use a stamp. So those are the three routes we're going to learn to do today. For a planished texture, you need a planishing hammer. This is a planishing hamper. The head of the hammer has a slight dome to it. You can kind of see it from the side. Slight dome, and then there's a ball peen on the far end. For the planished texture, we're going to use the slightly dome side. And if you look, you can see that I polish these tools before I do any hammering because any mark or mar that's in the surface of my planishing hammer is going to get transferred to my metal. So these hammers in my workshop, whether it's at home or at school, only get used to planish rings or to create hammered texture. For a planished texture, what you're going to do is take your object, you need to put it on a hard surface, so this is a steel block. Ideally, this would be polished as well. Um, I have polished metal, polished hammer. Because any sanding marks that are on my metal, when I hammer it, get pressed into the surface and I'm gonna have a heck of a time trying to polish them out without um, losing my hammered texture. Then I'm going to take my planishing hammer, hold my metal, what I'm doing is repeatedly hitting my metal with my planishing hammer. I want all the blows to cover each other so they're not separated by flat metal and I just keep hammering until the whole piece has the texture. In the end, you get something that looks like that. So that's our planished or hammered texture, our planished hammered texture. I would take this back to the buff and I'd buff it up because that'll kind of clean up any little mars that are left and I'm good to go for whatever step I have next. The next technique I want to show you is a more traditional hammering technique with the ball peen. You get a much smaller hammer blow. It's the same process. Put the metal polished side up on your metal slab, polished hammer, repeated hammer blows, working to overlap each blow. And you just repeat until the whole thing is hammered. And there you can see the hammered texture using a ball peen hammer. We'll see if I can get my camera to focus. There we go. You can see it's got a smaller hammer blow compared to the texture created with the planishing hammer. Both really add some nice lovely movement and when, and when these pieces move it catches the light kind of like 
a facet would on a cut stone. Um, the next step on both of these would be to polish, or if you're going to patina, to patina. Um, whatever um, finish that you want on this is the next step. One thing I didn't tell you is I did not polish the backs of my pieces because you can see in the process of hammering, the backs get a little bit dirty and not nice. So after I'm done hammering, I'm gonna do a quick sand on the back and then I'll polish the backs up. So polish the front, hammer on a metal surface, nice, hard, even blows that overlap. Um, the other thing you wanna make sure is when that hammer comes down to the surface, it comes down perpendicularly. So when you're hammering, it's hitting the surface like so. You're not tilting your hammer in different directions. The, last, the next texture I wanna show you how to do is a stamped texture. I'm using a letter O from a set of letter stamps that I have. You can buy all sorts of stamps um, that have lots of different shapes and designs that can create beautiful textures or details on a piece. I'm gonna use my O not to write a word, but I wanna have circles that repeat and kind of fade off as I go up this length of my, my metal here. Um, this is a piece I'm going to do a patina on after, and so I didn't want to have a polished surface. I needed to have a 600 sand to pick up the patina a little bit. So this one is not polished before I start. With a letter stamp or any stamp, you know it's facing the right way when you can, there should be a little mark on the, on the side of the stamp with the shape that's on it. And when that shape points towards you, you know you got the stamp the right way. So I'm gonna set my stamp down on my surface. I'm gonna make sure it's in the place that I want it. And then I'm gonna use a regular old claw tooth hammer and I'm gonna give one whap. You don't wanna hammer a stamp because it bounces. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this repeatedly until I have the effect I want. So at this point, I've created a stamp texture on my surface. I wanted it to be a little heavier on the bottom and fade as it goes to the top. And what you might notice is that my metal has curved a little bit. And that happens when you do any kind of hammering on the surface of your metal. It's happened with this piece too, and a little bit of cupping with this piece, though not as much because this is a thicker um, gauge metal and it's also a smaller piece without quite as much hammering that's happened. To get your metal to curve back to the position you want it, all you need to do is flip it with the curved side up so it's curving towards you. And then you're gonna get a mallet, a wooden mallet or a rubber mallet, and you're just gonna hammer that back flat on a wooden surface. Now I have three flat pieces. They all have different textures on them. Um, hammered textures, planish texture, and a stamped texture. <laughs>